You need a clear life plan. You don't have direction. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what your purpose is. And this is why today we are viewing the second habit of Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly successful people. Today, we're starting with begin with end in mind. And this is so important as we go into our lives and have a life plan. Today, I'm gonna to talk you through this habit so you can go and crush your life. So let's go. Hi, my name's Joe Noyne. I'm here to help you feel inspired every single day because you know you want a better life. So today we're talking about Stephen Covey's habits of highly successful people. There are seven habits. I've already talked about the first habit. Go and check my previous video out about being proactive. Today's begin with the end in mind. This is such an important value and script to build into your life. This is the third time I've read this book in the last 15 years and I've picked it up again and also have a workbook for it. And this is where I'm reading it much more slowly, taking in the lesson because I've grown. Because you've grown. You're watching this because you want to grow. But the thing is, you're still stuck in terms of where do I want to be? Why is it I'm not getting the results that I would desire? That's because you haven't got a roadmap. You are probably stuck on the pyramid of maybe safety on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And if you don't know what I'm talking about in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, pop it into Google and you'll see I mean it's a triangle. We have, you know, safety first, like shelter, safety, food, then we have um, belonging, friendship, and then there's, you know, development, and then there's self actualization, something like that. But go and check it out because it's really great. And the thing is, our whole life journey is based around Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We become safe. The problem is a lot of us just stay in that safe place, the safe zone, because it's easy, because it's familiar. But the thing is, something's missing. We know something's missing. It's like, if you ever watch The Matrix and Neo talks about the splinter in his mind, he couldn't quite work out what was real, what was not real. Is this real? And you've got to spin to your mind to know that you can actually do more than what you're doing. You know actually that you have to break out of what you're doing because you are absolutely fed up. You are like doing so much work, maybe for other people, that you have just lost yourself in it and you think, what am I doing? What's the impact? And this is something that I suffered with when you know, I went through my depression. I, I felt I wasn't making an impact because you know, I wasn't leaning into the things that fill me up. I wasn't you know, searching for information that was going to support you know, the things to help others to, to feel that I'm really actually making a difference. When I have a conversation, making a difference, being able to be a change maker. But now since stepping in and having this begin with the end in mind with seven, Stephen Covey's seven habits, things have started to change. Because what you're doing is you're setting a massive goal for your life. So you know mine, inspire the world, right? If you do that, you know where to go. Go through from below, go from the website, have a look. I want to inspire the world through content, through coaching, because I want you to live your best life. And that is my big goal. That's the legacy I want to leave. All this content I'm producing, I want there to be a legacy. People can come watch it and get lessons and be better and not be satisfied about, you know, not stepping in. It's have your safety, but stretch, 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 because as a human being designed to grow, you are absolutely designed to grow. And that's what Begin With The End In Mind talks about. You are on a growth path. There is not an end to finish line. There is not this thing where you're gonna sit on the beach all for all your life, you know, sipping pina coladas. That just doesn't work because you'd be bored. Think of the lottery winners. Lottery winners, they might get all this money, they have this great life, but then they go, hey, they're gonna start a business. That's because they need purpose. They can't just sit on their money and just go through life just going out for dinners and stuff because you will eventually get bored. They'll be bored. There'll be no, just a short, short term dopamine rush of those small uh, pleasures. And if you're a pleasure seeker, then that's it's not going to fill you up because you're going to be, you're going to just get that piece of dopamine. You're then going to feel great, but then you need a higher level of dopamine to get the better rush. So you're going to, have to keep, keep getting a higher bit of rush. Maybe it's like another pina colada, another pina, but then there's a destructive thing behind that, right? 
So you've got to be careful what you're centered on. And Stephen Coe talks about centers. One of them is the pleasure center, is that we keep chasing these centers, maybe buying things, right? I mean, you buy things to fill yourself up. You buy things to, hey, so people can say, okay, hey, I really love your car. Small dopamine rush, right? Boom. Small dopamine rush. That's not a great place to be because you keep seeking, you're empty. You keep thinking that everything's external. You keep thinking on the outside that, that things on the outside are going to fill you up inside, but it's not. You've got to find what you're about, who you're about. This is what this life's about. You want to go out there and live your most authentic life. And for me, it's helping others. And I, don't, I think that is what you want to do. You're watching this video because you want to serve and help others. And no matter where you are, don't make excuses. You can make videos, you could do a blog, you do exactly what I'm doing. You've got a phone, you're watching the internet, you have the facility to do that. You don't need for tons of money. You don't. You just pick up your phone and go and start. And that's how you make the impact. So when Stephen Covey talks about begin with the end of life, begin, you know, start with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. He's talking about your life. And I didn't realize this when I first read it for the first time. And I've really realized now that he's talking about the end of your life. So he's got this great exercise that he talks about in the book. And he talks about you are attending your own funeral. Imagine that for a moment, that you could attend your own funeral. So what he talks about four things here. He talks about what would your family say about you? What would the eulogy be? What would you want your family to say about you at your funeral? What would they say? What are the things you want them to say? The second person stands up, they're your friend, they're your best friend, or, you know, will stand up and give a eulogy about you. What would you want your friend to say? What would you want them to say about you? What, what would you like? You know, what are you giving? Are you there? I want you to think about that, reflect on it. Number three third person stands up for your work, for the contribution you do, for the work you do, what are they going to say about you? This is, this is what we're talking about. So what are they going to say? What's your union going to be like? And lastly, about community, what do you do to serve to the community? What do you do to help others? You know, once you've done your work, what's the other thing you do? How do you contribute? What would, what would you like the community to say about you? Where you are now, you know, would they miss you? Would you, would you want them to, what do you want them to say about you? This is really powerful because now you can start to put into context all the small things that you think are massive, but actually they're not. You know, you might have problems with your money, you might have problems with family, but actually when you think about it, your life matters. This is what I'm talking about today. Your life really matters. The problem is you've not set that, you've not thought about, hey, when, you know, when my funeral comes, what are people gonna say about me? You need to keep that in mind every day you walk through your life. Do not dream walk through your life. Do not sleepwalk through your life. Because you only have one life. And just begin with the end in mind talks about that. And you talked about the centers. Don't be pleasure centered. Don't be family centered. Yes, it's important. We've got to, you know, there's, there's family centers, there's pleasure center, there's money centered, there's, um, you know, friend centered. These are all the centers. If we, if we absorb in all those centers, then you know, we, we're dictated by those things. You know, if our family is having a, a difficult time, we, we, our energy is drawn out of it. If it's friends, if we lose friends, we, we're drawn out of it. The whole key around this is to find out who you are so you don't end up reacting to the world. And when you have this end, end, of, end, of, life, end of life vision that, hey, what's, what are people gonna say about me when, when, when I'm gone? You, know, you can craft, what do I wanna be remembered for? you'll start to think, hey, when I take that small decision, what's gonna happen? So for me, just a quick story. I was um, in um, a superstore with my mum, and I got a coffee, and I got the coffee, and I said, hey, my mum, mum was kind enough um, to buy a breakfast, which was absolutely lovely. And got another coffee. We didn't pay for it at the time, it was a really big queue. And my mum was gonna go up and pay for it, and said, hey, um, oh, it's too much of a queue, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to pay for it. I'm just going to go around the shop in and leave it. I said, no, let me do it. This is what Principal Centre is about, is to make sure you do the right things with people looking. Now, we could have gone around the shop and not paid that coffee. That coffee probably went £1.65, right? They're not going to miss it. It's not the point. 
The point is, what do you do when people are not watching? What do you do when you're on your own? What do you do when people are just not looking, not monitoring you? That's the key. What do you think about when you're on your own? Now, begin with your end of mind. It really keeps you on track. It really does keep you on track because if you, if you know how you want to be, if you are true to yourself, no matter what someone's looking or watching or not, you are going to be that person. And that's when you get the development. You are being principled centered. You are being committed to creating a character, not just a personality trait, it's a character. You are a real character. You're developing your character through the congruent actions and congruence, you know, that's in line with your true self to have a great life, to behave in the right way, to do the right things. Now, I'm not saying you have a perfect life. I don't, you know, I still make mistakes. That's what happens, that's what life's about. But it's learning from mistakes, learning from the failures and adding to your character. Because when you do those difficult things, when you know, you know, you know when you've got to do the right thing, and sometimes it's easy to do the, the easy thing. Could have easy to leave that coffee, right? Could have been easy just to leave the store, not pay for it. They're not gonna miss one pound, but it's not the point. You know, now you can be proud of yourself. I can be proud of myself that I stood in line, waited to pay for that coffee. Now, I don't know how many people would have done that. Would you have done that? You need to ask yourself and be honest. It doesn't matter. You know, this is the stuff that you can be proud of yourself that you did it. And when you do it, you feel proud, right? It's not about getting kudos from anybody else. It's about you and how you feel about yourself. You feel proud of yourself for the things you have done. So beginning with the end in mind is going to give you a roadmap for your life, your career, everything you want to do, your leadership, your family, your money, your friendships, every single body in your life is going to see a massive difference and you're going to have a really, really happy life. I'm not saying it's going to be challenging, it's going to be happy. So begin with the end in mind. So let's just start off with them. Let's have three things that we can do. So number one, I want you to do that exercise that I talked about. So imagine you're going to your own funeral, what your family are going to say about you, what your friends are going to say about you, yeah. what the community is going to say about you. Okay. And I want you to think about those people, what the community, okay. family, friends, work, community. What will they say about you? I want you to have that exercise. And number two, I want you to now build daily actions, like a daily action plan, a morning routine around making sure that every day you start the day with the intention to fit that goal, be your exact life. And you know what number three is? Number three is comment below about how you've got on, hashtag it Inspiration Nation, because I want you to win. I want you to commit, because now you're gonna have an accountability partner in me, and I want you to win. So I hope that's helped. I hope you enjoyed that video. I love you checked out this video right over here. I think you'd really enjoy all the content there. And also don't forget to subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. So until next time, this is Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you guys there.